Hello there and welcome. I'm John Tanner, Global Technology Editor for Telecom Asia. And joining me today, I have Ian Ko. He's the Regional Practice Head for Communication Services for Ericsson Southeast Asia and Oceania. Ian, welcome. Thank you, John. Now let's talk about voice over LTE. Um, why bother? Why sh uh, should operators deploy it? What are the benefits that they can get and what are the benefits to their users? All right, John, let's look at it from an operator's perspective to start with, right? Voice is still the biggest uh, uh, chunk of revenue for an operator today. So for an operator, that is the fundamental hygiene factor for them. Now, when they introduce a new technology, they must ensure that voice continues. A lot of users, although they buy devices and services, they still expect that when they hold a device, they can make a call. So that's most fundamental, the service continuity going into LTE. Then let's look at it from an end user's perspective. Today, end users are spoiled for choices on devices, but they also want higher speeds. There's a hunger for data. But as they move forward into LTE itself, there is something that they have also experienced off the internet, which they are now spoiled, which is the enriched communications where you can not only just talk, but you can also interact, file share, and see each other over video itself. Voice over LTE enables that to happen for an end user. So how can operators get ready for this? And what has to happen for them to progress and move on with voice over LTE? Well, first of all, they need to think carefully about how the end users would actually migrate over. In the early days, as they lay their network, it is very clear that LTE coverage will not be everywhere. And so they must ensure that the users could always fall back to a 3G or 2G network in the event that they're taking a call. And that's where CS fallback comes in. Then if you imagine that progressively the network gets built up in LTE, then what happens? You get a lot more users on LTE making calls to one another. Then voice over LTE comes into play. If you do not have voice over LTE and you continue to use CS fallback, then you could have extremely poor user experience. Now you may have answered my next question, but uh, most LTE networks now do rely on circuit switch fallback to, pro to provide voice services. Um, now with those services working and showing that they do work, then what's the argument in favor of going to voice over uh, LTE? Ah, okay. I'm glad you asked that question because I think it's important to think about this through an evolutionary step itself. What is the probability from day one when an LTE network is launched that you have a lot of users using LTE to make phone calls? Pretty small. So it's very likely that when you do make a call, one, end, one user could be on 3G and the other user could be on LTE. So CS fallback works perfectly, right? Because only one user does the fallback. And that experience is it's acceptable, right? Even though it is all be longer, be, you know, from 3G it's four seconds and this goes to maybe about six to eight seconds, all right, worst case 12 seconds. Now what happens when a lot of users are on LTE? Then you have to fall back and you're still using fallback, then you have to fall back for user A and fall back for user B. When you add the two times up, this goes up to 12 seconds or more, and that becomes an unbearable experience. So there is an evolutionary step, and the operators need to think about this, right? CS fallback in the beginning, but you have to very quickly introduce voice over LTE. Now there's one additional benefit for CS fallback, which is that you have to cater for the fact that there are still roaming subscribers coming into your country, or you as a voice over LTE user roams into another country itself. The standardization is not in place for roaming for voice over LTE. So CS fallback still has its place in the uh, technology. Now another thing that's not uh, fully understood about voice over LTE as well, and, and for some people, is that it's actually RCS, or Rich Communication Services, plays a role with that as well. It's actually an extension of Voice over LTE in a sense. So tell us about that and what's the relationship between Voice over LTE and RCS. Okay. First of all, Voice over LTE uh, sits off a technology called IMS that's been around for many years, right? What has happened now is that everybody has accepted that to make LTE work, to have voice on LTE, IMS is the foundational piece. So that builds the initial business case. Now, how should we then look at rich communication services? What is that in context with voice itself? Then we take a, st we, we, let's take a slightly different direction. Look at the internet itself. Like I said at the beginning, that you are used to interacting with your friends in a variety of different multimedia services of the internet. You are doing messaging, you are sharing files, you are talking, you can upgrade to a video call and then you can downgrade back to a voice call and conference somebody in. Now, all that is great except that it has to work with a specific client, a specific application, you know, you got to make sure that your friends and you have the same 
application. Now, what happens in voice over LTE is that the evolution of voice goes into all these multimedia means of communicating. Suddenly, you can call anyone, anywhere in the world, and then decide that you could collaborate on a whiteboard, you could share files, share videos, and at the same time, bring new friends into the phone call itself, or downgrade yourself back to voice again. So voice over LTE and RCS works in tandem with each other. They are complementary services. It enriches the voice communication. Okay, well, we're out of time, unfortunately. So Ian Kohler-Erickson, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, John.